Hi, I'm Bob Taper with www.learnvisualstudio.net, where I teach beginners the skills that they need to get their first software development job building Windows and web apps at the world's best companies as quickly as possible. So in this lesson, I want to show you how to build the most simple C-sharp application, a Hello World application. It'll simply display the message Hello World in a Windows console window. Now, I'm not going to attempt to explain much in this lesson. You're going to get a feel for the workflow. In other words, how to create a new project, where to type the code, how to test your application and see it working, and so on. So for now, just try to follow along and don't worry if something doesn't make sense immediately. Over the course of the next lessons, we're going to dissect this tiny little example and we're going to explain every line of code that we write and why we did it. So I'm going to assume that you already installed the most recent version of, of uh, Visual Studio Express Edition or one of the greater editions. Uh, and you're asking yourself the question, what do I do now? Okay, so first what I want to do is close down. If you're following along from the previous lesson, we, we left it in this state. I'm going to go ahead and close this and show you how to get back to uh, Visual Studio. So what I want to do in Windows 8.1 is go to see all of my apps by name and I'm going to find Visual Studio Express 2013 for desktop in the list of apps. I'm going to right click it and that'll bring up the little taskbar and I'm going to uh, select pin to taskbar. And so now whenever I return to the desktop I can see that Visual Studio icon is in the taskbar for our convenience and so if you want you can remove this after the course but it's just a nice uh, quick convenient way to get back to it. All right, so let's go ahead and click the Visual Studio icon and we'll launch Visual Studio. And so in Visual Studio's file menu, I'm going to select New Project. And in the New Project dialog, I want to choose a project template to start with. So first of all, you want to make sure that you're working with the Visual C Sharp templates, okay? I can't tell you how many times I've selected Visual Basic and I didn't mean to. And then we want to choose the console application in that center pane. And then I'm going to type the word. I'm going to remove the name uh, that was there by default. And I'm going to type in hello, capital W in world, no spaces, capital H hello, capital W world. And then I'm going to click the OK button in the lower right hand corner. And then after a moment or so, you'll see that Visual Studio will create a new project based on the project template that you selected, the Windows Console application. Okay, so you're going to come to understand what a project template is and what it provides for you throughout the remainder of this course. For now, let's just keep moving forward, okay? So uh, the dialog disappeared and uh, we're loaded into the main pane of the IDE, uh, the Integrated Development Environment. So I want to find this opening and closing set of curly braces underneath the word static void main, all right? And I want to type in the following code. And so I positioned my mouse cursor, as you saw, kind of somewhere in between and then hit the uh, enter key on my keyboard. I can do it a couple times just to make some space for myself where I'm going to begin to type. And then I'm going to begin typing the word console, all right? And notice when I do that, I get this little pop-up uh, menu that, uh, that pops up under where you're typing. So don't let that distract you for now. Later, this is going to become your best friend. But for now, just ignore it and continue focus on typing the following code between those two curly braces. So console.writeline and then I'm going to use double quotes, two double quotes, and type in the word hello space world between those two double quotes. And then I'm going to put a semicolon at the very end of the line. So console, capital C and console, dot, right line, capital W, capital L, right line, no spaces between those two words. An opening parenthesis, a double quote, the word hello world with a space in between, then another double quote, a closing parenthesis, and then a semicolon at the end, okay? And so now let's do the same here with a read line. All right, so again, capital C in console, period, read line, capital R, capital L, opening parenthesis, closing parenthesis, nothing in between, and then a semicolon at the end. 
Okay, so I want you to inspect the code to make sure it looks just like what you see here on my screen. Again, capitalization is important, as is the spaces or lack of spaces. Uh, the use of special characters like double quotes, parentheses, whether opening or closing parentheses, semicolons, and so forth. It has to be identical, okay? Uh, and so if you see any red squiggly lines underneath something that you typed, uh, that is your cue that Visual Studio is giving you that you didn't type something correctly. So take a moment to carefully inspect your work before going forward. All right, so what we're going to do is click this little Save All button in the toolbar here at the, at the top. And then I want to run the application. I'm gonna, so I'm going to start. click this little Start button in the toolbar. It's next to that little green triangle button. All right, and so if you did everything correctly, you should see a Windows... Uh, command or console window open up with the message hello world all right awesome so let's go ahead and click the red X in the upper right hand corner and you can see that Visual Studio returns to its its state there might be some other windows open you can just close those for now all right so if you see a message that there were build errors then it's probably because you typed something incorrectly so let's go through a few scenarios some common problems that people have when they first start writing software. Okay, so when you see this dialog, there were build errors. Would you like to continue and run the last successful build? Uh, choose the no button, all right? And when you do, you're gonna see an error list that will appear docked by default at the bottom of the IDE, at the bottom of Visual Studio. And it'll give you clues as to what went wrong. The quickest remedy is to take a close look at what you typed in uh, and, and see how your code deviates from the code that I wrote. And so here are some possible error messages and their remedies. So first of all, you can see that I have this invalid token, uh, the parentheses in class struct or interface member declaration, right? Uh, and as you'll learn, the curly braces define a block of code or a code block. Different commands belong in different types of code blocks, and we're going to discuss those in an upcoming lesson. But for now, if you see that message, it's probably because you didn't put the code in the right place. Make sure that you're putting it in between this opening and closing curly brace underneath the word static void main. So I'm going to just use my mouse cursor, highlight both those lines of code, hit Control X on my keyboard, move my mouse cursor inside, and hit Control V on my keyboard to paste it inside, and that should get me back into a working state all right all right so if you see the build errors dialog and the message is that there is a semicolon expected in lines 13 and 14 uh, and so to fix this all you need to do is just add a semicolon to the two lines of code that you wrote like so just like a properly formed English sentence must finish with punctuation C sharp code also has to conclude with a semicolon. You are missing that in one or two lines of code, and so by adding it back in, your application should run. Great. If you see the build errors dialog, and you get the message that there was a, um, a parenthesis expected, invalid expression term, parenthesis, and then a semicolon expected, or something along those lines. Well, this is a little bit trickier to interpret from the error messages, admittedly. Um, the words, hello world, must be surrounded in double quotation marks. Make sure that yours has double quotation marks around the two words, hello and world, like you see here on my screen. Uh, the reason is because we want those two words to literally be written to the screen. And so we use the double quotation marks to denote that those words represent a string literal. We'll talk about strings and string literals later in these lessons. For now, just apply those double quotes around Hello World and you should be good to go again. Great. If you see the build errors dialog and you get the errors, uh, errors that say the name console does not exist in the current context, uh, there's a good reason because it's not lowercase c in console, or maybe you misspelled the word, but I suspect, as many beginners do, they don't realize that C-sharp is case sensitive, so it's not lowercase c in console. You see the little blue squiggly line kind of giving you a hint. It's capital C in the word console. 
So uh, as I said a few times, C Sharp is picky about capitalization. So make sure you type exactly what I type from now throughout the end of this series of lessons. Console with a lowercase c and console with a capital C are two different things as far as C Sharp is concerned. So just capitalize the code or capitalize the C in console and you should be good to go again. Great. Similarly, if you get the build errors dialog and you see system console does not contain a definition for write line or read line, uh, it's, it's similar. It's because uh, the W in write line must be capitalized and the L in line must be capitalized. The R in read line and the L in read line have to be capitalized as well. All right, so again, precision is important with C-sharp, and there are some shortcuts that'll help you improve the speed and the accuracy of typing when you're in the Visual Studio Text Editor, and I'll talk about those a little bit later, and they are a godsend, and they will help you never to get it wrong. But if you see something that says that you know console should have a definition for right line, I mean, I wrote it, it's spelled correctly, make sure that the capitalization is also correct, all right? So if you find some errors or issues whenever you're typing in the code, try to pay attention to the error list like we have up to this point and let it guide you to help remedy the situation. Honestly, it's usually something pretty small. Once you learn more about the C-sharp syntax, these issues will occur less and less often, or at least you'll be able to spot them or identify them quickly using the little blue and red squiggly lines that appear under your code. We'll talk about what those mean in an upcoming lesson. Okay, so assuming you got this to work, you're well on your way to building applications. Uh, as you undoubtedly learned in this lesson, uh, writing C-sharp code is an exercise in preciseness. Fortunately, the IDE will help you write code correctly, or at the very least, it's gonna show you where you went wrong. So in the next lesson, we're gonna focus on the syntax of the C-sharp code that we wrote. If preciseness is required, then you're gonna to need to, to have some explanation as to what all these little words and these symbols mean that we've been typing in. It's really easy once you get a few basics under your belt. So we'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you.